This is uh, video 15 in our series, uh, Topics in Tensor Analysis. Uh, the video playlist uh, for all the videos is featured at the website, digital-university.org. Uh, in the last video, we had derived these relations, where this is a metric tensor, and this would be the contravariant component of either some vector or some tensor, and when this operates on this, it gives us a covariant component of whatever vector or tensor this belonged to. And likewise, if we have the metric tensor expressed in contravariant form, then if this is a covariant component of some vector or tensor, then when this operates on this, it gives us a contravariant component, whatever vector or tensor that this belonged to. And right now we could just think of it like this, is that um, here these repeated indexes, instead of summing over them, we could think that they just obliterate each other so that B gets labeled with the index that's left over, the I label. And same thing here, these obliterate each other now B gets labeled with the index left over the I label. In reality, as we'll see in a few moments, <clears throat> this is a matrix. In fact, we derived this matrix specifically for cylindrical coordinates. So this is a matrix times a column vector gives us another column vector. And the same thing will hold for here as well. But for now, let's just say to get used to this, suppose we wanted to have, say, a vector A um, and a J covariant component of that. Then we could say that that would be equal to some metric tensor where J is going to have to be its inner index and then operating on a contravariant component, say K. These are repeated, so we can think of these repeated indexes obliterate each other, so A gets labeled with the only index left over, the J index. So we could have it like that. Or if we wanted to have, say, A I, then we could say, well, that would then would be some metric tensor where I would have to be its inner label operating on some covariant component, say J, and then J would be the outer label. These annihilate each other so that A ends up being labeled with the only index left, the I label. Now, if we have this situation, so the Kronecker delta, K, I, and let's say A, K. Now, here, this is zero unless k is equal to i, and that equals 1. So this equals a i. But we see, we just noticed right here that a i can be written in this form. So we can say that this equals g i j a j. But if we want to, we can express a j like this. So this will equal g i j. And then for a j, we'll put this in. g j k a k. So what does this give us? Here we have then, 
we start with this and we end up with this over here. So what this tells us then is that g i j k this has to be equal to delta i k as we had here delta k i a k equals g i j g j k a k so this clearly implies then that this g i j g j k equals delta k i now as we shown earlier um, I forget what the number of the videos a few videos back but we showed that for cylindrical coordinates g j k had this expression it was 1 0 0 then 0 rho squared 0 then 0 0 1 for cylindrical coordinates this is this specifically this matrix now what is this well this gives us the identity matrix because this is 0 if i does not equal k it equals 1 if i equals k so if we have so it's a two-dimensional case this is when the i's and the j's are equal as on the diagonal parts of the matrix or if we had a three-dimensional case again on the diagonal elements is when i and k are equal to each other and that's equal to one then if they don't equal each other then it's equal to zero so this is just another way of writing the identity matrix which we can just write with a capital I so what that means is here's a vec here is a metric tensor we can think of it as the covariant form here is what we call the contravariant form of the metric tensor and we see that when they're multiplied by each other it gives us the identity matrix so that would mean then that these are really inverses of each other so they're both of these are non-singular matrices they have an inverse otherwise their product would not equal the identity matrix now this again for cylindrical coordinates that was this matrix we derived that a few videos ago well this has to be the inverse of this matrix now for this type of matrix that inverse is very simple it's this matrix multiply these two matrices together and you will get the identity matrix now as we said before in general when we work with curvilinear coordinate systems um, we're going to have components off the diagonal that will be non-zero the reason why for cylindrical coordinates we got this um, pattern here where the diagonals are non-zero and the off diagonals are zero is because for cylindrical coordinates um, they're orthogonal to one another but for most curvilinear coordinates they are not which means then that we're going to have non-zero elements off the diagonal so then in that case if we know what the metric tensor is and we want to find its contravariant component 
by taking the inverse of that, then it's it's more complicated than just this simple situation. And if you go to the website and then go to the video playlist for linear algebra, I think it's in videos number 10 and number 11 where we uh, demonstrate the technique of how to, when we have a non-singular matrix, how you go about finding its inverse. But for this video, we just wanted to point out then that this, and remember now, the definition for this was just the inner product of the tangential vectors. These are tangents now to each of the coordinate axis and g say i j these are orthogonal to these. The e i's and the e j's form a reciprocal basis. And again, we've discussed this back in videos 8 and 9. But what we want to say then is that, yes, this was our definition, or one of the definitions, one of the forms of the uh, metric tensor. Well, then this is like the contravariant definition of that. But now what we've shown is that these, of course, are both matrices and multiplied together, they give the identity matrix so that the covariant and the contravariant metric tensors are both inverses of each other. And that's all I want to say about it um, in this video. And again, um, for deriving a specific form of the uh, metric tensor, we did that, I think it was in video number 10 or video number 11, for um, cylindrical coordinates and gave a demonstration of that. Okay, what we're going to do in the next video is talk, um, conclude our discussion about metric tensors and we're going to consider in a little bit more abstract notation and again consider the concept of the covariant metric tensor and its contravariant counterpart. So come and join us for that video, and then we'll conclude our discussion of metric tensors, and then we'll consider um, the subject matter of Gustavo symbols after that. So come back and join us for those videos, and we'll continue along here with our discussion.